one who's responsible for uh, introducing or setting me up with my niece and uh, we're going to just do a little quick interview. He uh, was kind enough to invite me to a workshop today and uh, we went through a lot of uh, on-the-job training, if, if you will, of uh, beekeeping and it's been uh, incredibly enlightening and I, uh, I know a lot and not much at all. So uh, let's uh, talk to Pat a little bit. Pat, if you wouldn't mind the uh, um, well, how long have you been in beekeeping? Uh, this is actually my 34th year of beekeeping. I started beekeeping in northern Wisconsin and I get migrated to Iowa about 1989 and I took up beekeeping here. I was always a hobbyist or sideliner. I was up to about 100 hives and about uh, five years ago I went to work for Spring Valley Honey Farm and right now we're at around 5,000 hives. Wow, that's a lot of hives to take care of. <laughs> yes, it is. All right. Well, what um, what you were you were mentioning to me before that you also teach a class at Nyack? Or? Yep, Nyack. I do a, a, a class for Nyack. It's uh, beginning beekeeping. It's the four Saturdays of February. It's been that time every year because it's basically the only month I have time to, to, to do it. The rest of the year I'm pretty busy. Um, but the four Saturdays of February we do it. Um, I do it because I love to. Uh, Nyack gives me a classroom. That 25 people over the last four years we filled that room up and hopefully we can continue to do that. Great, yeah, that is really good. Um, so, you were saying that, that you've been doing this for 34 years? 34 years. Yeah. Okay, I know that you send your bees to California. Would you mind explaining that a little bit? Um, you, you, you listen to the news lately, uh, a lot of beekeepers in Iowa lost their bees this last winter. It was a pretty hard winter, pretty cold winter. And uh, talking to Andy Joseph, our state apiarist, uh, this last winter, uh, he's guesstimating that Iowa lost it somewhere between 60 and 70 percent of their bees. Now, running 5,000 hives of bees, I cannot afford to lose 60 to 70 percent of my bees. It'd be like a cattle farmer losing 60 to 70 percent of his cattle. He can't afford to stay in business. So we send our bees to California, and it's a dual purpose. One of them is to get them out of the harsh Iowa cold winters, and the other one is uh, almonds need to be pollinated by a pollinator. And there's about 900,000 acres of almonds in California that need to be pollinated. It takes one and a half beehives per acre, so you need about 1.5 to 2 million beehives in California in February and March to pollinate almonds. So basically, anybody that's willing to load their bees on a semi to send them to California can get their bees into almonds in California because California only produces or has about six to seven hundred thousand hives of bees so they need quite a few more beehives out there to take care of that business and we we sell our send our four to five thousand depends on if we have good enough to go to California. Wow that's great. Um, now you know kind of hitting upon that is this largely based off of uh, what pesticides have done or is this just kind of the nature of the beast or? Um, pesticides are a problem for beekeeping. Um, you know a lot of people are saying well no they're not really. Um, pesticides are designed to kill bugs. I mean, this is a bug, a honeybee is a bug. Um, in the right dose it's going to kill honeybees. There's some chemicals out there that are the parts per billion is more toxic to honeybees than other chemicals. Uh, it's just like bleach and ammonia in your, in your house are both good chemicals. You mix them together and you're going to have a reaction and it's not a good one. Well, uh, uh, Marla Spivak, the University of St. Paul, says the average pollen coming into the beehives, you see these bees flying around us right now, the average pollen coming in has anywhere from four to six chemicals in that pollen. And they're taking that into the house and that's what they're eating. That's part of their food. Uh, they take the pollen, mix it with honey, make a, a food called bee bread, and they're eating those chemicals and that's not good for the bees. And it's shortening, shortening the life of the honeybee because of that. Wow. So the average, uh, well, we one of the things we learned was the average lifespan of a honeybee, the worker honeybee is about two months? It, about, it's, right? it's about six weeks to two months in the summer. Okay. Uh, whereas the queen can anywhere from a couple of years to even longer. Three to five years. Yeah. yeah. Are we seeing a lot of problems with genetics with uh, queen bees? Um, some of the chemicals uh, basically are affecting the reproductive cycle of both the queen and the drone. The drone is a boy bee. 
Um, some of the chemicals that they're using in California are making the drones sterile, and that's where a lot of our queens come from. So even though the queens go out, they have to fly to be mated. Even though they go out and they fly, they get mated. They're mating with sometimes uh, sterile drones, so basically they're not getting the semen they need to make them so they can lay fertilized eggs. If they don't lay a fertilized egg, it's not going to work. I see. Okay, well, back off of the controversial topics a little bit, and if someone's interested in beekeeping, other than the obvious answer of go take a class, what's one of the first things that you should do to get prepared for beekeeping? If you really want to get into beekeeping, you have to read and do research. You have to learn about the honeybee because it's not an easy thing to do. There's a lot of expense in, in, involved in this, and if you're going to spend the money, four or five hundred dollars to get a beehive, you better know what you're doing because otherwise they're going to die on you and you don't want that to happen. Um, take a beekeeping class, those are things. Uh, there's different places on the website. Just because people can put things on the website don't mean they should because a lot of the stuff on the internet that you read sometimes is not really good information. It might be good for Georgia or in the south, but some of the practices that they practice down there is not going to help you get hives of bees to survive our nice cold weather yeah. in the wintertime. You have to do different practices to, to make that happen. So you have to learn where you can get your information. Uh, in Iowa, a good place to go is the Iowa, Iowa Honey Producers website. It's abuzzaboutbees.com. Uh, you go there, there's a lot of good information there, different links that you can hook up and find different information different companies that will provide you with information to help you become a better beekeeper. That's great information to have. As a matter of yep. fact, that's one of the things I'm going to be doing. Um, I pretty much did it the wrong way. Uh, I uh, heard about bees. I was interested in bees. I talked to a friend who had bees and uh, was even more interested. Uh, I said something to another friend of mine who gave me a new hive. It turns out to be half of a hive. was not exactly what I needed. and. Uh, I called Pat and said, uh, you know, I think I'd like to get into bees. And he said, well, we got the last shipment coming in on Monday. And uh, so we were off to the races and I had to do a crash course on beekeeping and how basically not to kill my bees. Um, so far they're doing really well. So I must be doing something right. But yeah, definitely educating yourself is, is huge. Uh, and what kind of equipment should you look into? Like if you're on a budget, what's, what's one of the minimal things that you should do? Um, if you're on a budget and you, you're really cash, cash conscious or whatever you want to call it about the money you spend, uh, you've got to get the beehive. There's, you can buy used equipment, but if you do that, make sure you talk to somebody that knows because you don't want to buy some diseases. Um, and, and that's going to cost you a certain amount of money, probably somewhere between 100 and 150 If you buy new equipment, it's going to cost you 200 to 250 somewhere in there. But one of the things you should have is you should have some type of veil. You know, even though you might not think you need it. Honeybees are a stinging insect. Sooner or later, you're going to get stung. A smoker, something like this, basically, the smoke helps calm the bees because everything the bees do is by smell or pheromone. And so the smoke masks that smell. And then you need a hive tool because a hive tool is what you use to pry the beehive apart because they glue everything together with a substance called propolis. Yeah. And um, that brings us to the next thing. Um, in your first year of beekeeping, what are some of the things that you really need to be worried about, necessarily? I mean, when you get started, what are the first pitfalls that beginners get into? Um, first pitfalls is, and we had one of those here today, a uh, person in the class, they got the beehive, they put their bees in it, but they didn't want to go in there to see how anything was going because they were afraid they were going to kill something or hurt something or do something wrong. Well, you have to go in the hive, first of all, to make sure the queen's out of the little cage she's shipped in and make sure she's laying eggs like she's supposed to. If she's doing that, close them back up, let them sit for a week, 10 days. Then you go back in, make sure she's keep doing the brood nest is growing. And as she lays eggs and bees hatch out, the hive keeps getting bigger and bigger. And once it gets to a certain point, we have to add a second super on. A super is basically the boxes that the bees live in. Once they get that second super filled up, then you have to add your third super, which is usually a honey super, and that's usually mid-June. That's when your honey production is going to start coming in. So those are kind of some of the things you need to think about and you get the bees to that. Um, so we kind of raised the idea that they are sticking in. I mean, everybody knows that. 
but um, if someone has an allergic reaction, well, first of all, if somebody does have an allergic reaction, what's one of the things you can do? Um, there's actually different kinds of reactions. When I get stung by a, a honeybee, I'm going to get a little welt, maybe the size of a mosquito welt that most people get. Um, some people will get stung, like in the arm here, and half of their arm and their hand will swell up. That's a mild reaction. Even though it probably looks pretty bad, that's a mild reaction. If you have an allergic reaction, or you go ahead and like a shock, basically you're going to start getting hives and things like that. you got to get that person to the emergency room really quick because they need to get a shot and uh, bring that under control. If you just have the mild reaction, uh, Benadryl and different things like that, which reduce swelling, put ice on it, things like that. Okay. And so if you are someone that you know has a, a reaction, should you avoid beekeeping or should you venture into it with a little bit of caution? There, there, I mean, these are, there's, there's a lot of variables there. There's there a lot of variables there. Um, I know some beekeepers that carry around an EpiPen. An EpiPen is what you have to give yourself in case you get uh, stung because if you do get stung, you, have, you go into anaphylactic shock, which is what happens. And they're still beekeepers. Now, there's a lot of crazy people in this world. So um, whether you should do that, if you have that kind of reaction, um, I make my total living on honeybees and my oldest son is allergic to bees. If he gets stung, he has to have an epipen. He takes that and he himself to the hospital. But yet I've managed to keep bees all these years. And he very seldom, if ever, gets stung because he usually just stays away from it. But there are those people that, that want to do this. They think it's fascinating enough. That you can put on enough gear to almost go years without getting any stings. Well, so that brings me to my next question. You've been doing this a long time. How, you know, on an annual basis, not over the career, but on an annual basis, what is it? what's an average sting? Oh, that's a tough question. Um, you know, we went through five hives here today with people. I basically dressed like you see me right now. I didn't get any stings today. Um, on an average day, when I'm working my bees, we probably go anywhere, through anywhere from 250 to 500 hives a day. On a day like that, I'll probably average anywhere from four to uh, maybe 10 stings. That's on an average day. Sometimes you get out to the out yards, you get an abandoned acreage where there's been stings there messing with your bees. Sometimes you'll open a hive that's just mad because the skunks have been coming back day after day, irritating those bees and they're just mad. You open that hive and bam, bam, just like that. You know, I do worry about Africanized honeybees because they're coming up from South America. Right now they're in Texas, Florida, Georgia, uh, Arizona, New Mexico, all the southern states. Um, when a queen honeybee flies to get mated, she flies in the open atmosphere. Um, an Africanized drone or boy bee can fly faster than a European honeybee, which is what you see here. And so usually the Africanized drone will catch the queen faster than the European, which means they mate. So if you buy queens from those areas, you might want to think about that. We call them hot bees. Sometimes you'll get a bee that has a, they're a little more aggressive, things like that. That's an Africanized trait. Uh, it's something we try to avoid. So if you are going to get bees, check where you're getting your bees from. Try to get them in a place that's not an Africanized zone. Be a lot better. Perfect. All right. Well, I think I've pretty much asked the question that you want to ask. Is there a, you want to give a plug or say anything? Um, Basically, I just I encourage anybody that wants to get into beekeeping to, to do some research. Get a hold of me if you want. Go to the Iowa Honey Producers website. Just Google the Iowa Honey Producers. Um, my goal in life is to educate this world about honeybees. Any bit I can do, any chance I can get to get in front of a camera to try to promote this, I will do that. Um, I think honeybees are getting a bum steer right now because of all the chemicals people use, uh, the different uh, pests we have, Aurora Destructor, it's like you having a big wood tick on you. Uh, that little bug gives the bees viruses, viruses aren't good for you, they're not good for bees, uh, things like that. The environment we live in, you look at the way they farm around us, um, you don't see any flowers like you used to. Iowa used to be one of the top leading honey producers in the United States with an average of 350 pounds of excess honey every year. Last year we had a pretty good year and we averaged about
about eighty pounds of honey that's quite a drastic change and the only thing that changes the way we farm mm -hmm. instead of row crop everywhere corn and soybeans which bees get virtually nothing off of there used to be small family farms that had hay crops they had cover crops different things like that there was wildflowers in the ditches things like that uh, if you want to do something to help the honeybee uh, look up some some natural flowers that you can plant not the hybridized ones get the the natural flowers that the prairie flowers things like that something that's beneficial to wild pollinators because the honeybees aren't the only ones that are dying off. It's the blue orchard bees, the bumblebees, the butterflies, the hummingbirds, the bats, things like that. Those are all pollinators that help us in this environment that we live in. If you want to do something for somebody, plant a flower. It might be a little thing, but a little flower will go a long way. That's great. Thank you so much for uh, talking with me. No and problem. thank you for your help. And, and uh, stay tuned. Okay. We'll do more. Thank you.